We're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation, and this will tie into electrons and some of the um, emission spectra of elements and why they are unique. So first we have to understand a little bit about electromagnetic radiation. Okay, and we can view light as both a wave, wave, oops, and as a stream of photons or packets of energy, this being a particle kind of idea. All right, so each one of these little packets of energy is called a photon. Most subatomic -par sub particles behave as particles and they obey the physics of waves. Getting back to electromagnetic radiation, you describe electromagnetic radiation one way is by its wavelength, and that is one cycle of a wave. Um, you can see that sometimes the wavelengths are smaller. Um, the amplitude is the height of the peak, and the node is where it crosses the axes. The next definition um, And we'll get to the different types in a graph in just a moment. But the color of light is sometimes defined by its wavelength, which is represented by this symbol called a lambda. Its frequency has this symbol nu. Sometimes also they use an F for frequency. Um, your book for IB uses that. Lambda and nu, frequency and wavelength, are related by the equation C, being the speed of light, is equal to lambda times nu. All electromagnetic radiation travels at the same velocity, that is the speed of light, which is normally taken to be 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Frequency uses the units hertz, and it is the number of cycles per second. Okay. So these um, waves are traveling through the air Okay, and what you do is you at one point the number of w total wavelengths that pass by that point is the sec in a second is known as the frequency. Lambda again is measured in meters. Sometimes depending on the length you'll see it as centimeters, micrometers, nanometers, angstroms, which is also symbolized with this, is 10 to the negative 10th, and picometers, 10 to the negative 12th. So the main equation is speed of light C is equal to lambda nu. You can rearrange those for anything and calculate one if you know the other. So you can calculate the frequency if you know the wavelength and vice versa. Okay, so the direction of travel of the wave this way, okay, there is an electrical field component, a magnetic field component. Um, you don't need to know all that, just throwing it out there. Um, high, new, higher energy versus a lower frequency, lower energy. So the higher the frequency, the lower the wavelength, or the shorter the wavelength, the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. <coughs> Here is the electromagnetic spectrum, a picture that is what you typically would see. You have high frequency wavelengths being the gamma rays that we talked about. In nuclear, low, next lowest in energy, x-rays, then you have your UV light. A small slice of this electromagnetic spectrum is actually visible light. Usually what they do is they take that small slice out and expand it so you can see the colors. Next lowest in energy, infrared. Microwaves is in here, I think, right about here. And then radio waves. Okay. Important to know about where these fall in decreasing energy.
So again, high frequency, short wavelength, high energy, low frequency, longer wavelength, lower energy. Just looking at another, okay, radio waves, microwave, infrared, visible light, UV, x-rays, gamma rays. Okay, so how does this all relate back to atoms and atomic structure? Well, neon lights. These are actually where you put energy into the element neon and it glows, it gives off color. So how does this work? Excited gases and atomic structure. It started with uh, Niels Bohr looking at trying to understand line emission spectra of excited atoms. And if you remember from uh, previous classes, the Bohr model of the atom being electrons in rings around the nucleus. His model is limited in that it only works with hydrogen. Now, what is his model? What was the actually the experimental evidence that he was looking at? Get to that in just a minute. If we look at white light, okay, and we put it through a small slit so that we have this small beam, put that beam through a prism, we will see a continual spectrum of the visible light. Okay, what the prism does is it spreads the light out, so you see a continual spectrum. If you take a sample of hydrogen gas and excite it and excite it and then you put it through that same slit and prism, you will see discrete lines in your emission spectrum. Okay, so this says something about this gas having something in there that only has discrete energy levels as opposed to the continual spectrum of white light. So what Bohr took from that emission spectrum with those discrete lights is the idea that an electron at its normal ground state energy level could absorb some energy and jump up to a higher energy level. It's not stable at that higher energy level so what it does is it shoots off electromagnetic radiation sometimes in the form of visible light, and then it goes back down to the ground state or the normal energy level for that electron. If we look at hydrogen, hydrogen with its one electron okay, can jump up to these other energy levels okay, because there aren't any other electrons, it's just the one. And in this scenario, the energy levels are really just the main energy levels. They don't split apart as the, they do in atoms that have more electrons and the sublevels split into the, those orbital levels. Okay? Or I should say the main energy levels are splitting into those sublevels. So there's much more going on with other atoms with more electrons. I don't even know what those arrows are doing. Okay. <coughs> so again, an electron in the atom absorbs energy, jumps up an energy level. The electron is unstable and it is kicked out. When that electron loses energy and it comes back to the original level, light is emitted. Sometimes visible light. Hydrogen has the simplest emission spectrum because of that one electron. There's no repulsive forces from other electrons that are going to cause those principal energy levels to split into those different sublevels. The fact at this point that you only have those discrete lines indicates that the existence of only allowable electron energy levels and the study of that specter allowed for the electron structure of hydrogen to be deduced. This is the emission spectrum of, of hydrogen. Okay. What you need to remember is that the hydrogen atom has 
basically three series. Passion series, passion, I don't know exactly how to say it. Passion series, which is in the IR region. The Balmer series, which is in the visible reason, region. And the Lyman series, which is in the UV region. Increasing frequency up to the Lyman. So this is the most energy released is this upper region, this upper series. And hopefully you can see that the distance that that electron moved is the greatest. Okay, so the change in energy level is the greatest in this series. Second is the Balmer, and then third is the Passion series. The other thing to note, if you look at the difference between these, these energy levels, N meaning main energy level, principal ener principal quantum number, principal energy level. Anyway, N is equal to what we call the main energy level. Mm -hmm. The distance between 1 and 2 is much greater than between 2 and 3, than between 3 and 4. As you see, as you go up, the distance between these energy levels gets much smaller. Okay, and that's also something important to note. But you are responsible for knowing these different series and that the Balmer series is the one in the um, visible light region. Okay. And then this is really, I think, just putting into words everything that was just said on that previous slide. So, line emission spectra of excited atoms. Excited atoms emit light of only certain wavelengths, and that's because of the um, discrete energy levels. Wavelengths of emitted light depend on the element. <coughs> Here's some examples of what other elements would have as an emission spectrum. Okay. Other points to note. Okay. There are only allowed energy levels, certain allowed energy levels in the atom. So there are a limited number of amounts of energy that an electron can lose. Those energy levels are not evenly spaced, but rather that the higher the energy level, the smaller difference between those energy levels. This means that only certain frequencies can emit light, and this is why we get the line spectrum. This also means that the lines of the mm -hmm. spectrum will converge with increasing energy. It's also interesting that the limit of this convergence indicates the energy required to completely remove the electron from the atom, that is to ionize it. And we can use this to determine the ionization energy.